As you guys can hear, I don't sound the best. <laughs> yeah, and I all... sound a little low today. I welcome everyone back to another episode of Father Knows Something. How'd you like that? No. So as you can tell, I have a... <laughs> she didn't like that. Uh, yes, I have a little frog in my throat. But uh, I'll be well, hopefully, and in seven... We'll give myself seven days to get back to me, myself, and I. So... Yeah, you're not sounding too too chipper over there. Well, I, I feel good. I, it's, I feel good. I feel you fine. sound... It sounds pretty brutal. Yeah, well, it, it sounds worse than what it is. That's good, at least. Okay. Positive. So what do you, what's our theme tonight? The theme is jealousy, and I think we've done it in the past, so it's kind of a 2.0. I'm, I'm checking right now. Was there a, a, a I think Justin was speaking that we we're going to do a bunch of, a show on recaps. Yes, so we are going to do a, a show on updates, but because Justin is sick as well and we couldn't really get together with all of us to do it um we're pushing it a week so updates will actually be hopefully next week depending on how everyone is feeling but this week is jealousy jealousy which i'm searching and i i don't see an outright jealous theme so i think we uh we might be good okay Whatever you say to do, I'm I'm right here ready to rock yeah. with you. And it's not, it might not be like outright our writer is jealous or it might not be so clear, mm -hmm. but it's just kind of giving a vibe of like, is someone jealous? Is there some insecurity maybe at play? So we'll, we'll see how it goes. I, I look forward to it because I do know one thing, no way in no circumstances, jealousy healthy for a relationship. Which is interesting because some people say a little bit of jealousy is is healthy. Really? Some people. I think it, it kind of like is like, a, oh, well, at least you're, you know, you are getting jealous. You're still interested. Well, yeah. I mean, there's a certain thing that you that you want to make sure that your person still is on the same path as you are. But jealousy can run to be absolutely there's some insanity that goes along with it. And, you know, to the part where you go, oh, my God, I know they're here. And you get in the car and you drive over there to see if they're there. And, of course, no one's there because they were smarter or they were somewhere else. Yeah. Or, or it's just not happening. Mm -hmm. So it has a way of really messing with your mind and uh, not a fun gig in, in, in any way, shape or form. Yeah. When it gets toxic, not the best. But let's let's see what you think of these. OK, writings. I'm sitting here with my voice. The frog. <laughs> oh, it's so sad. <laughs> but I'm smiling. You can see the smile. I'm smiling, guys. The eyes are dancing, so it's it's it just sounds worse than what it is. Here we go. Okay. Okie dokie, up first. See how comfortable I am? Yeah. Very. I'm relaxed. Yeah, and your new shirt from Costco. And my new Costco shirt. I like that one. Okay. So. Okay, so it says, Hello, Jerry and friends. I have an issue that's made me slightly uncomfortable for a while now. In 2020, I moved in with my best friend. After about a year and a half of living together, I met my now boyfriend. I still spent a lot of time at home and going out with my friend because I didn't want her to feel like I dropped her after getting a boyfriend. Still, no matter how much time I spent with her, she still seemed jealous of me spending time with my boyfriend. She would make comments that she wishes she had a boyfriend and once told me she thought my boyfriend was hot and wished he asked her for her number instead of mine the night we met. It made me extremely uncomfortable and she continues to make even worse comments. I lived with her for two and a half years and recently moved in with my boyfriend. We met up for lunch one day, and she told me she was talking to her dad, and he asked, quote, did Blank and her boyfriend break up yet, and is she moving back in with you? I honestly have a hard time believing her dad actually asked this, and if he did, what did she tell him to make him think that? I told my boyfriend about these comments, and it really upset him as well. I feel she is not truly supportive and is jealous of me, 
Even before I started dating my boyfriend, she wouldn't celebrate my successes with me. She always assumes the worst or asks rude questions. For example, if I got a new job, the first thing she would say is something like, quote, how much are they paying you? Or if I slept in on a day I had off, she would worry for me and think I was skipping work, assuming the worst. I don't want to be friends with her at all or anyone that's not going to support me. My issue is I'm graduating next week and she asked what day it is and I told her, not really thinking about it. She said, quote, great, I'll be there. Wait, can I come? I just assumed I was invited. I felt like I couldn't deny her at that point, but I really don't want her at my big moments anymore, especially since my boyfriend and his family will be there. Ideal outcome, I have distanced myself, but I wish she would just leave me alone. I don't want to talk to her about this because I just don't care or feel I owe her an explanation. If I tell her why I don't want to be her friend, I know she will get defensive or say she didn't say slash do those things. I'm just done. Thank you for your advice. There are times that some people just say things that are just dumb. So if the father, if the father honestly just said, have they broken up yet? It's because he doesn't have any sense to say something brighter. Like, how are they doing? I hope they're doing wonderfully or something positive. If it was really her and that was something that she just put in because she misses you and she wished she could have that relationship back to what you guys had. And she is insecure that she hasn't found you know, a mate to be with. And, you know, people, there are some people that have just jealousy in their DNA, their own insecurities where, you know, you have something and they want it. You know, I have some friends that are much more successful than I've ever been. And my feeling was, I'm so happy for them. I'm glad they have that success. I'm glad they can buy the things they want to buy and do the things they want to do. It doesn't affect me to say, gee, I wish I was them because I'm happy who I am and I'm happy with what I have and I'm grateful for the things in my life. So I never looked at it that way, but some people don't see things that way. And, you know, the fact that you're happy in your life and you don't need her in your life is, is fine and healthy. Nothing wrong with that. You know, to make a scene to say, gee, I really don't want you to come to my, my, my graduation. Graduations are usually an open field. If she comes to the graduation and she sits out in the back, you know, out, out in the audience, you don't have to invite her to dinner with the family afterwards. That is true. She comes up to you, she congratulates you, you say thank you, you give a hug if you wish or no hug if you don't wish, and life goes on. You don't have to involve her in your daily phone calls and little by little you phase out. You, know, you don't have to make a big issue about it, but you can easily send a message by just not involving yourself. And that's probably the way I would handle it. I would not say anything about this, you know, don't come to my graduation. I would just say, you know, we'll be there. I mean, it's, it's like I said, it's open seats. She comes when you guys go to eat, you've already had your plans who you're inviting to go to lunch and you go to lunch. And if she says, if, are you guys going out after afterwards? She'll say, we had, you know, we have our own plans and, you know, we'll, we'll catch up at another time. And, yeah, And that's all you need to say. You have no obligation whatsoever at that point in time. And just be who you are. No more, no less. Yeah. Well, there is a little bit more of additional info. Okay. And it goes on to say, not a big deal, but also kind of weird. I was in a wedding her and my boyfriend were both invited to. It was in December at night, so we all knew it would be cold. She wore a very summery dress and asked my boyfriend for his jacket. It made me upset to see her wearing his jacket. My boyfriend is very kind, so I know he just didn't want her to be cold, and I'm not mad at him for this. I feel like my friend should have known this makes her look like she's with my boyfriend. When I walked her to her car at the end of the night, she had a bunch of nice winter coats in her car. She brought multiple jackets, but instead of wearing one of her own, she wanted my boyfriend's. It felt like she was living out some gross fantasy where she was his date. I would just hold yourself higher and not not lose yourself with this stuff. You know, the fact that she's a goofball, you know, just ignore it. You're stealing my word. Look at you. Really? Yeah, that's my word. Goofball. Maybe I learned it from you deep down. Could be. Huh. Imagine that. Yeah. I, uh, I agree. It also, I don't know if she necessarily wanted... 
like to be your boyfriend's date or she just wants to be you. Like there are some people that are just jealous and we all have our moments. Like there's definitely times in my life where I've been jealous of Alejandra or I've been jealous of Lauren and what in one way or another, like God, Alejandra just looks so good. I wish I could have her workout drive or, you know, there's things like we're all jealous of our friends in some small way or another, but it's the fact that this girl is letting it be a very unhealthy mm -hmm. dynamic to the point of like, not wearing a jacket in when you had multiple jackets and asking someone for their jacket. Like it's interesting, but at this point in time, now that you recognize that just distant yourself in a responsible way yeah, and, exactly, and move on and go forward in life. Look, you got many years ahead of you. You're just graduating now. So mm -hmm. yeah, I wish the best to you and your boyfriend. I think that you got a guy that, you know, he's has clarity and he see, sees what's going on. And I wouldn't worry about it one way or the other. Remember he's the guy, you know, hopefully with you at night and he's the guy with you during, during your life and not her. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't put any, any serious um, negativity or any kind of energy into it. It's just not worth it. You, you do think though, just the slow fade out method is better than just even confronting it. She doesn't care anymore. Yeah. Just over it. Yeah. She's over it. She yeah. said, you know, I mean, if she was like, you know, this is my best friend. I want to be friends, but she said, look, this, this thing is kind of, taking its path and it's it's coming to kind of an end. I would let, I would I would just let the tide take it where it's going to go and just <laughs> let it fade out. And if the girlfriend says, "Look, you know, what's going on?" You can say, "There's some weird shit that I've just gotten a vibe that I just didn't want to deal with." Yeah, I think if she confronts you, I think then it would be fair because, you know, yeah, I mean it it deserves honesty at yeah, that point in time. Yeah. And because you're you're a woman with integrity. Well, yeah, and it's like at one point you were good friends and I get that this vibe has gotten really weird and that's not your fault at all. But if in the past she was a good friend, like it, good friends are hard to come by. Obviously right now she's not being a good friend, but maybe it's something that she just like doesn't even realize she's doing because it's just so, you know, this jealousy is just kind of overpowering her and it's second nature at this point. But if you're over it, you're over it. And I think, yeah, just move on slowly. Ghost. Do, 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 do. That's all. Sometimes things just take a cycle. You never know what's going to happen. Also, you know, she may find somebody and chill back out. And all of a sudden she's a normal get, person she get, again. She gets her shit back together. <laughs> Who knows? True. Okay. Moving along. And I'm going to stare at a light for two seconds because I'm just waking up from a nap. So I'm a little sleepy still. Okay, while you do that, we uh, we had a busy morning this morning. I actually got Morgan up at 7.30. She wanted to go do a... Oh, uh, an little, estate sale. An estate sale. And she wanted to be the first one to be there, so she didn't miss this thing that she wanted. And we, they were overpriced, and I still didn't get it. But it's not. But the game's not over yet. Yeah. But we had a great day together. We drove around. We did other errands. We did all kinds of things, so... Had a good day. Are you awake yes. now? Are you ready to go? I'm 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 hanging in there. Okay. Yeah, we'll we'll see how I go. I'm just not a morning person. I don't know how morning people do it. Whew. Okay. Okay. Up next. Yes. Hi, Jerry, Morgan, Justin, Holly, and others. I hope you can lend a little advice to me. I, 23 female, don't know how to get over the way that my childhood friend Joe and I have drifted apart. We had been extremely close since middle school, but in 2020, we were fighting all the time because he started dating a girl that, for a while, we both had recognized as not a good person. I was friends with her for a few years and knew her character. I thought Joe did too, but then Joe admitted he had feelings for her and decided to ask her out, seemingly out of nowhere. Nowhere. I was the last person to find out that they were dating because he didn't want to tell me, and our friends slowly but surely fell apart. I said things that I shouldn't have said about their relationship, and I recognized that fully. Joe found out about what I had been saying, and I still feel like shit to this day about the things I said and understand that I definitely am in the wrong. I regret it every day, but somehow he forgave me. We stayed friends for a while, texting often, and even meeting up to hang out once or twice. Then, in the middle of last year, Joe randomly started ignoring me when he'd see me in public, like at my workplace, 
even though behind the scenes we were still texting in a very friendly manner. He then started posting things on social media about things I love and enjoy and was actively shitting on them. He would post about the musicians I liked and would say they were horrible. It seemed targeted. I didn't understand where this was all coming from because we had seemed okay. I understood after everything that I had said in 2020 that if he didn't want to be my friend anymore, I would be okay with that. I knew I was a shitty person for what I said, but he was the one who chose to forgive me. I just couldn't understand then why Joe would start ignoring me in public or why, when I would be friendly to both him and his girlfriend in public, his girlfriend was nicer to me than he was. I decided that it was best for me to not talk to him anymore. We no longer talk at all, and I believe it's for the better. But a part of me can't help but keep hanging on. I'm not sure what to do. Ideal outcome? I want to let go of Joe. I do not want to be friends anymore or try to rebuild that bridge because I have accepted that our friendship is in the past. I know I screwed this up a few years ago. We are in different phases of life now, and I accept that. But I just want to know how to let go. It's hard to see him in public and on social media. I don't want to hold on to this anymore. Even the smallest bits of advice would help. Thank you. Additional info. I know it may seem I'm jealous of Joe's relationship with this girl, but I'm not. I have never had feelings for Joe in that time that we were friends. I'm a lesbian. My first instinct as we were right is you were reading. I was saying maybe she needs to write a letter, but the answer is you only write a letter if you want to find a remedy to the problem. And she is clear that the relationship is over. She just wants to find a way of freedom. My answer is block everything. Don't unlo- discipline yourself not to be able to see anything on Facebook. Discipline yourself or or, or cut access that you can get any kind of idea of what's going on with him just so your brain has a chance to heal. You, you have to really, you know, literally sever that wire. And with that, maybe that will help you go on and find new things in your life to be fulfilled and you will heal from whatever that relationship or whatever that connection is. Because obviously you guys must have had a very good connection for all those years that you were best friends. And look, there's an intimacy in friendship And whatever that was, that connection that you had, there was a very close connection that you guys shared that got broken when somebody else took that part of him and and his attention. So it's a healing. You just have to heal from it. And maybe after it's all healed, then you guys will, you know, one day cross bridges, but you'll be, it will be a healthy connection, a healthy hello, not one of how do I deal with this? Because when you meet somebody and you're going that you used to be friends with, they say, "Oh my God, how do I deal with this?" That tells you that there's something still connected, and you're not healed from it. There's a wire still loose. So sever it and let it heal. That and it's also just really awkward. Like mm-hmm. I don't know about about you, but I get really, really bad, like social anxiety when like just I don't know what it is sometimes and so like I luckily haven't ran into the girl that I like was really good friends with like one of my best friends and then whoo like f- things fell apart she was a terrible person um and I have not ran into her but I know if I did I would probably poop my pants like just that awkward like how do you uh, just do you say hi you're do not, you not say hi you're not healed no, but me, no, I, I would totally disagree with that. I would say I am healed. I truly do not care. Then why does she have an effect if you see her that you would poop in your pants? Because it's awkward. Like that's still an awkward matter. encounter. It's still awkward. Get to the part where it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter, but it's still an awkward encounter. It's not an encounter that I wake up saying that would be enjoyable. It's awkward. You're... The bottom line is you are going to have awkward, uncomfortable encounters in your life. Is it because it wasn't finished off correctly? No. What I'm saying is that there are sometimes these encounters in life that no matter how you feel about it, Mm -hmm. no matter how resolved you are, it might just feel awkward. And that's just the way the cookie's going to crumble. It's not going to feel chipper. No. I'll tell you what's really interesting is I'm processing this. You and I and other people out there have different ways 
that they process the termination of a relationship or a friendship, however it is, and, and how to deal with it when it comes in front of you. Your experience, you know, and what your ex- leaves you with awkward. Mine word says when I'm done and it's really totally healed, I could give a shit. I'll meet him and say, hello, how are you? If I wish to, or just walk by and not say a thing. And then some people that had a real effect on me. Those are the ones that are awkward because they had such an, a, a, a profound effect that may, may or may not be solidified yet. And I can think of a couple in my life that are yeah, like that. Yeah, it's weird. It's not the fact that I have no, I, I truly don't care. Like, don't care about anything she does in life Mm -hmm. or anything. I don't have any feelings about what happened anymore. I look at it and I'm like, oh, objectively, like that was a really fucked up situation Mm -hmm. that I got put in. And she wasn't a good friend. Mm -mm. And, you know, maybe in the same breath, she could say, well, you weren't because she for sure would because that was the battle. I mean, it was always you're jealous of me. Why are you always competing over the same guys as me? Like, it was always flipped on me about what I'm doing. Mm-hmm. And it was, it was, it was really like, her. well, it was just like, I'm not competing with you over the same guys. Like, I have a boyfriend. I have Brendan. Like, what? What? It was just, it was coming out of nowhere. And so I, you know, pe- there's always three sides. Mm-hmm. Their side, your side, and, the truth. And the truth. And so, you know, whatever. But I think sometimes in life, you just will have these people that it's just not, gonna be fun it's never gonna be oh my god hey how are you great have a good day bye it's it's always gonna feel just kind of so the interesting thing is because father only knows something doesn't make him right just this is just a a concept that we all have our own our own feelings on how to get through some of this stuff for sure and to uh to heal but yeah i just i think honestly like the best thing you can do it's like oh it's hard to see him in person I would, you know, just give a wave, but I would unfollow on social media where you say like, it's hard to see him on social media. You don't have to follow him still. Like oh. you can unfollow him and still remain neutral. And that way you that you literally block him out of your life as much as you can. Yeah. And I think a lot of people need to do that. Like mm-hmm. if there's people in your life that you just find that aren't healthy for you. Like even influencers or people you follow on your social media that anytime you see their posts, they make you feel bad or they're shitting on things you like, but like, oh, you really liked their stuff. Uh, Unfollow them. Like there is such a toxic relationship with social media sometimes where you feel the need to keep following people because they follow you or you don't want them to unfollow you. But bottom line, if it doesn't make you feel good, don't be following that account or that person. I agree. Totally. Yeah. Okay. So we wish you luck with this one and yeah. and hope you heal 100% where you don't have to even let this person affect you in one way or another. Yeah, for it's sure. It's a good song, isn't it? One way or another. Go Your voice is you. really scaring me. <laughs> okay, moving right. along. Okay, let's go. Hello, Justin, Morgan, and Dad. I need some help from an outside perspective. This might be long, but I'm hoping for some help, and I know you guys love to have all the information, so here it is. I, 21 female, and my 20 male fiancé and my daughter, 2 female, have been having problems with my mother-in-law. Just for some background, me and my fiancé have been together for a little over four years. We met on Snapchat in December of 2018. We got pregnant in about September of 2019. I gave birth to my daughter in June of 2020. She's a COVID baby, lol. We have cut contact with my mother-in-law because we don't want her involved in our lives because she's just absolutely crazy. She let my fiance's father abuse him when he was a kid and sat there and watched. His parents never wanted him and it took him years to realize his family wasn't good. We don't want his family in our lives, let alone in our daughter's. After my fiance's father passed away, he got death benefits, and when I got pregnant, he moved in with me. His mother was still using his money on her bills in a house he wasn't living in. Even after he got his money, she made him pay for her bills. 
Since we cut contact, she has people stalking my social media, having third-party contact, and is now trying to have people take pictures of my daughter, a minor, when we are out in public and have them send them to her. My fiance's mother is not my daughter's grandma, even if they are blood, because she never tried. It's always us trying to make her have a part in our daughter's life. She even threatened to hit my fiance while I was pregnant, all because he was setting boundaries. I found out a week ago by a girl who works at Walmart that cashes my checks that my fiance's mother was talking shit about us and that she wants her to take pictures of my daughter and send them to her. This threw me over the edge. We want to take her back to court for a restraining order, but I'm scared that we might lose again or the judge will tell us it's just a son trying to have a family and arguing with the mother. I want the judge to take this seriously, and I just want to keep my daughter safe from someone who only sees her as something she couldn't have. I just want to know if you guys think I should try again or leave it. Ideal outcome? I just want my fiance's mother to leave us alone and to stop having people spy on us and steal pics of my daughter. I want to know if I should try and take her back to court and get a restraining order on her, or if I should just leave it be. Additional info. I believe she is jealous of me and having a child with my fiance because she couldn't. She always wanted to know about his sex life, said sexual things about him, said his penis was bigger than his dad's, and I could go on and on, but we would be here for too long. I believe she has wanted to fuck my fiance, but obviously couldn't. She treated me like I was carrying her baby and always made comments about my parenting and body. She also tried forcing us to do things with our daughter for other people just because they are family. I've never even met them. My daughter has never even wanted to be around her, let alone let her hold her, and she always said that I was teaching my daughter to hate her. The judge also told her that if she tried third-party contact or anything, that he wasn't going to be so nice. It's evident that they have gone for restraining order before, which we, we learned that through the conversation. Yeah. So the most important thing that I would try to figure out is why did the judge refuse the restraining order and what has changed since? If nothing has changed since, it's the same action, then you'll probably come up with the same place where you are today. But here's the most important thing. I'm not a lawyer. I'm not a judge. I don't think like a lawyer and I don't think like a judge. So that's something for you to find counsel and have counsel or a lawyer direct you on this. Yeah. Or protective child services. Maybe that can step in and help you with this as well. You know, the, the greatest thing is sometimes when people don't get boundaries. And look, when you said this woman, you know, this is your this is the father of your ch of your daughter's mother, biological mother or stepmother. Mother. You know, to make an accusation, she wants to fuck her son. That, that shows that this woman is really twisted if, if there's any truth to this. There's thing. some moms out there that definitely... This is fucked up shit. So, you know, <laughs> if, if you can't get the boundary because they live around the block, then maybe you need to pick up and move around the country and relocate yourself to a place where you are protected. If, you, if she doesn't leave you alone and the court system won't help you, that's your only direction is that you have to pick up and go somewhere where she can't find you. Yeah. You know what, though? I could see that first court appearance. I could see a judge, especially a male judge. Sorry. Okay. But I could see a male judge just kind of looking at this as, oh, a woman, she's harmless. This is just family drama. There's no restraining order needed. You guys need to figure this out between yourselves. I could see a judge being a little easier initially in this situation and not wanting to elevate it mm -hmm. to a restraining order right so away. Why do they put a, rest what does a restraining order represent to you? Just curiosity. Um, a restraining you. order to me sets specific legal guidelines that that person is prohibited from, depending on the order, being in a certain, they have to be a certain distance away from you. They have certain regards to not being able to contact you. It just depends on this, you know, what so, gets approved. So a, rep a, a, a restraining order to me brings on a word called a reputable harm. And if someone's going to cause a reputable harm, 
that's when a restraining order kicks in. So you have to go proven that this person is harmful and can cause harm that is irreparable. Well, so according to Google yes. and Shouse Law Group. Okay, because remember, I'm not a lawyer. A person can ask for a civil harassment restraining order if the person is being harassed, check, stalked, check, abused, or threatened by someone else, and the person is not in a close relationship with the restrained party. So I think restraining orders can honestly be more casual than we might think. Like, I think... I think, you know, asking people to take pictures for mm -hmm. her, that is stalking. Mm -hmm. So I think or, she or, has grounds to ask for a restraining order. Or she just goes back to the judge and says, judge, it's my grandchild. I want to see a picture of how they're growing up. You know, I, and I, that's where you hopefully have a lawyer that can represent you and say, you, you know what? Bingo. She might be a grandma by blood. But she has not acted like a grandma. Bingo. She is not safe for this child. So I say a lawyer is the most important thing that this person really needs. And there are lawyers, if you're unable to afford a lawyer, there are lawyers out there that are part of, you know, clinics and they're part of pro, do pro, pro bono pro bono work. Yeah. Most bar associations, I think, even, even ask their lawyers to be able to do so much pro bono a year to help people that are unfortunate can't afford it. So... I would certainly take a look at, at this and see if that's an avenue that you can go down to get that protection. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's probably necessary. I think, think, I mean, thank God the woman at Walmart told you that she asked because how many other people has she asked and they might not have told you and they might have taken the pictures. Like mm -hmm. this is beyond creepy. I, I can't get over this. I can't imagine having the gull to go up to someone and say, hey, someone's going to be coming in here with a little girl. Get a lawyer. Get someone to help you. This is crazy. Yeah, I agree. And you just don't know with people. I mean, there are some scary, sick people out there. And I mean, people have killed for less. We we have, we have watch the news every night. And I'm sure everyone who's reading, who's hearing this tonight and will write in, we've all seen the stories of, you know, friendly people you know, family connection of kidnap and this and that yeah, crazy stuff. So this really is the, like, I, like my original gut feeling is get some counsel to help you get through this and get this person at least on a, on a, on a list of uh, where she does need uh, no contact or some kind of supervisional contact or yeah. something that, that, that settles you to feel secure and safe with you and your daughter and, and your son doesn't have to deal with this stuff because if any of the stuff that you said is really, really accurate, this this woman is not normal. At least no. not by at least not by my by my by my by my thought process. No, and the sad reality is there are boy moms out there that look at having a son and there's this one video I saw where it was like, having a son is going through a slow and painful breakup. Excuse me? Yes. People post this shit on TikTok all day. There are just some mom boys that are just really gross and they raise their son to be the ideal partner. But the reality is like, that is your child. That is not your partner. And so that's where my favorite word comes in, enmeshment. And, uh, look, there's a lot of sickness, Morgan. Look at look at the fathers that have abused their daughters and sons. There's a lot. There's a lot out there. It's terrible. But I also um, do not think that your fiance, if he is still paying for his mom's bills, oh, he can cut that shit. He off. needs to cut that off. Like the boundary really needs to be drawn. Now, the check is his. It's not hers. If it's coming for, if he's getting checks, oh, benefits. Yeah, yeah, they're coming to him. He's, he's, he's beyond that age at this point. It's, it's his stuff. That's his. Yeah. I mean, he's 20 and I get, you know, feeling like you need to help your parents out and stuff like that. But when you have someone who is very toxic and not healthy in your life, you can't keep supporting them financially. I think a lot of people also look and say, well, it's her mom or it's this or that, but they don't take in the fact that a lot of families that are out there, are, there are families out there, it's a better way of saying it that are truly so dysfunctional mm -hmm. that we never imagine the dysfunction that goes on out there. There is some definitely some funkin' 
dysfunctional out there. For sure. Okay. Moving Jerry, along. Let's go. Hi, Jerry, Morgan, and Justin. I'm a 24-year-old female, and I'm very happily married to my husband of just over a year. He's great and treats me with so much respect that I've never received before, and it's made me value myself so much higher. Growing up, I had a very difficult childhood, starting when my father was arrested for SA when I was six. From that moment forward, my mom pretty much decided she didn't want to be a mom anymore to her five children, six to 14 years old and started partying and pretty much ignoring our existence. She did some other really awful things to us, but it's not that relevant to my story now. My sister and I had a very tumultuous relationship growing up because we are just very different people. Her and I have become very close over the last few years due to sharing our trauma together and supporting each other when no one else in our family cares. My sister lives in Paris, France, while I live in Austin, Texas. My sister recently came to visit us in Texas, where my mom and I live. My mother lives about 45 minutes away from me. My sister chose to stay with me over our mother, even though I live far away from downtown, where all of my sister's friends live, because we are close and my mom is just not pleasant to be around for longer periods of time. When my sister came to visit me in December, we made an itinerary over a week in advance and sent it to my mom and got her approval for everything we decided to do. I think my mom got jealous that my sister was staying with me and started talking badly about me to my sister, saying that I was saying things that I wasn't. My sister confronted me with it, and I told her the honest truth, that I had no idea what she was talking about. I think when my mom saw that it didn't work, she decided to talk bad about my sister to me. I instantly saw right through her and contacted my sister about the situation. We both moved on from it and just try to put it in the past just so we could have a good time while she was here. I only see her once a year, so it was very important for me to not have problems between us. Well, I guess my mom had other plans. My mom ghosted us and never showed up to any of our plans. She texted a few minutes before our dinner reservations on the last night my sister was in town and said she wasn't coming due to money issues. We offered to pay for the meal, but she still said no. Flash forward to today, my mom texted me saying that we ostracized her when that was not true at all. She was being very rude to me, pretty much saying that we ganged up on her when she was the one that ghosted us. I told her that I chose for her to be in my life, and if she wants to continue being in my life, she needs to be respectful towards me and not to talk to me until she realizes that I am not the person she is mad at. I was kind of referring to that she is mad at herself, if that didn't come across, lol. She continued messaging me for a while, a lot of rude stuff, but I simply just ignored her because I don't have the energy to deal with something that I did not cause nor did I want to put energy into her inextinguishable fire. My sister agrees that I did the right thing, so I'm not so much worried about that, but I'm considering cutting off my relationship with my mom. We have a very unhealthy relationship for me personally. She calls me constantly and only talks about herself and her problems, and if I don't answer, she uses her anger to make me feel bad. She's a grade A narcissist, and she thinks she can do no wrong. She can twist any conversation for her own convenience, and frankly, I'm over it. We've tried to work on a relationship multiple times in the past, and we've been on good terms for about a year before this happened, but I don't want to try anymore. I don't know if I'm being irrational and should try to work things out once again, or if I should actually go through with it and cut her off from my life completely. It's a big decision, so I would really like some advice on the matter. Thanks so much in advance. FKS and THT has really been a light in my life, showing how I shouldn't deal with the dysfunction in my family, and I always love hearing y'all's advice. Ideal outcome? No, not really. I don't know what a good outcome will be, but I just want to go with the healthiest option for my mental health. Additional info? I just want to say thank you for taking the time to read my submission. I really value y'all's advice and would love to hear what you think. I think you guys, your sister and you, have a great grasp on the situation you know the dysfunction that your dad had and the fact that it carried through also with huge dysfunction with your mom for just all of it you guys are right if your mom wants to partake and and not become part of an issue i think 
that's great when she's able to do it. The fact that she's not doing it, you don't have to buy into that control and all that crap. You guys really got her figured out and you totally got to enjoy yourselves and not let her drama uh, affect you. And that's going to reinforce something with her to say, I can't do this. And maybe you'll be fortunate enough that in the future, maybe it might be a, might be next time she might be uh, amenable or it might not be for another five years of this repeat performance of you guys saying, we're not going to take this shit. I, I think that, f that you guys are on the right path. Totally. Yeah. Well, and it, I mean, sh how the, the trip played out really just shows where the mom is at. She didn't like how things weren't going her way. And so she sabotaged and by sabotage didn't show up. Mm -hmm. So then she could play the victim. Classic. I mean, just classic. So I think like you're probably at a point where you're like, you're so burnt out about trying and putting in the effort. I think the only thing that might be something to consider is like low energy options where it's like, if your sister is in town again, mm -hmm. probably staying with you again. It can be like, hey, mom, blah, 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 and I are going to dinner. Would you like to come? Love to have you. We're going to so-and-so at 8 p.m. Feel free to join us. We'll it would see, be great. We'll see you there. We'll see you there. If she comes, great. You guys can continue that relationship as long as it's healthy. And if she doesn't come, she can't play the victim and say, you didn't invite me. You're ostracizing me. Like, you get kind of the best of everything and you just don't invest so much anymore and it sucks because that's your mom like I think you know we all want good healthy relationships with our parents and so it's sad when we feel we get to this point of I need to cut contact it's mm -hmm. it hurts but at the same time it does feel a lot better not having that toxicity. So it's it's a tough decision. And I think you just need to decide like what's going to be the healthiest and best for you. The, the manipulating that she attempts is just not acceptable. No, the fact she's trying to stir the pot between the two siblings I, and, and I, gang them up on each other. Yeah, I think that I, I, and I might even say it to her. I would say, you know, mom, I, what, I mean, this is the la last time that, you know, Betty was here. There was this shit going on. Mm -hmm. And I'm not going to tell you that it, you did it or didn't do it. I'm just going to say, we read the shit going on and we're not interested in it. What shit? I don't know what you're talking about. So I'm glad you feel that way. But just know that whatever's going to go on in the future, when she gets here, we're going to call you up, say, we're going to be here. If you want to join us, come join us. And if you don't, we're not putting any pressure upon you. Yeah, I, I would say, you know, that might be the way to go. Especially because like the past year had ha up until this mm -hmm. had been very drama free. Mm -hmm. So it might be worth a shot or, or like you just you don't put in energy. And I think you laid down the hammer really well based on what you said to her, where you're like, I'm not the one you should be mad at. Like the only one you have to blame in this mess yourself. is yourself. Like you, you chose not to come to dinner. Like we offered to pay and you you chose to ostracize yourself. So father knows something agrees with daughter who definitely got that answer right. Cause I just, I agree with you. You've called it. Yeah. It's hard. It just sucks. Perfect. It sucks. But you know, a lot of moms do this. I, um, I have a friend who has a parent that went AWOL after a divorce and basically left a five-year-old to fend for themselves. And it's, it's wild that people sometimes choose to have kids and then just kind of pop off. We uh, we also knew Taylor had a friend. Yeah. That, and he ended up dying. Yeah. It was really sad. Very sad. Really, so really sad. You know, being a parent, it's the most wonderful thing in the world to partake and enjoy your children. So anyone that's out there that's having children or you have parents that, you know, may, may have forgotten this, maybe just letting them replay in their mind how what a blessing that you are in their life and you guys should work on your work on this relationship because it, it, it's one time around that's it yeah you know family is one time around we I mean I'm 65 and you know when I was you know 30 to 65 
those years seem like a flash, but I don't for one second in my life, look back on my life and say, I didn't have a full life. I've had business wise, I've had a roller coaster, but the one thing that was <laughs> always there and has been stable is my family, is my kids. And I, and I appreciate you guys. I appreciate every bit of love that we've got to share back and forth. And yeah, no doubt, we have had some cat fights that we wanted to probably tear each other's eyes out because, yeah. because of pain, because you give each other so much love that when you're disappointed with something, there can be some, some frustration. But I will tell you that love never left, never left the building. Never. Yeah. But needless to say that... Uh, I hope that you will get your parents into the show and hopefully we can uh, let them also understand how you think by hearing these stories of other people. Yeah, and it might help some parents might, realize, well, I'm being a little goofy. And, and that would be something that would mean a lot because this is really why, again, I do this, is that I want people's lives to be as fulfilled and, and ri enriched as possible. Not to drive you guys from one another, but to bring include you and and bring everyone together. As, look, it's an idealistic thought, and sometimes it's impossible. Yeah, because of the dysfunction with some of these families, and I don't even know how to deal with those ones. But I'm sure <laughs> you never know. You never know. So good night, and we'll see you next week. And oh, come on, jump on over to Patreon. I did look at our at our analytics. Interesting enough, our analytics, analytics. Uh, yeah, analytics. Analytics. I don't know. It could be a data data thing. Mm -hmm. Anyways, I see that it's like 43% of our watchers are subscribers and the balance are viewers. Not oh, not you guys, you're breaking our hearts. So I'm really honestly trying to get that 100,000 viewer you know, sub, you know, subscriber. So if you guys can help me at all, if you are watching the show, you know, typically every week. Don't, don't be afraid. Click the button. There's no charge to you. All it really does is it sends a note when our next episode show up, but it helps us in our ratings. And actually we're trying to make a little compensation for what we do for the time that we put in. Yeah. So uh, I do love the reward of just being able to do it, but it really does help as well. So please, if you feel that you can subscribe, go ahead and do it. Subscribe. With a, with a B. Yes, there Subscribe. you go. Subscribe. There you go. Good night. Bye.